Okay. No ecological effect, negative social effect, negative political effect, and economic effect, creating a big new playground for financial capital. Right? That is the reality of currently existing global climate politics. There is no attempt to solve the climate crisis and to bring more climate justice inside the official COP process. We need a different strategic alternative. And I'm going to point to one fact. I was going to say, as I already said, emissions have been rising since Kyoto came into force, except for the last year. Now, in the last 20 years, there are only two processes, only two processes that have achieved significant emissions reductions around the world. The first is the breakdown of the Eastern European growth economies in the early 90s. Right? Now, I, I call them growth economies because I come from the left where we can have great dogmatic debates over what the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc used to be, degenerated workers, state, state capitalism, whatever you want to call it. The Eastern Bloc economies were growth economies. They decided to compete with the West on how much they could grow and deliver in terms of stuff. So when they broke down, emissions really went down. In fact, the Soviet economy shrank by 40% and its emissions went down by 40%. Uh, that's intriguing. The current world economic crisis has, within one year, reduced global emissions by 3 to 5 percent. Right? Nothing else has done that. The Kyoto Protocol promised to reduce emissions of industrialized countries 5 percent by 2012. That will not be reached. But the world economic crisis has managed to reduce emissions. What does that mean? Not that I want more crisis, because in a capitalist system, crisis means people losing their livelihood. But I am pointing to the one process that we know has reduced emissions, has reduced the rapaciousness of the, the, with, it, with which we move in global environmental space, and that is reductions in economic growth. But empirically, I just want to hammer this home, only reducing economic growth has reduced emissions. Now, in a capitalist system, reducing economic growth always takes the form of a crisis in which people lose their livelihoods. That's not what we want. The empirical fact that reductions in economic growth have reduced emissions leads us to, like, must lead us to conclude that we need to think about a collectively planned economy of degrowth or economic shrinkage. Uh, we don't have a good word yet. Degrowth or decroissance sounds a bit awful, and in German it sounds even worse. Rumpfungsökonomie, <laughs> horrible. I mean, German words sound funny, but anyway. But um, you know, collectively planning our economic shrinkage in a system where there's a massive transfer of resources from the north to the south. Now you might say, okay, now there's obviously some crazy Marxists standing up there saying that we need to, you know, have a revolution and destroy global capitalism before we start talking about the climate. That wouldn't be entirely appropriate to do right now, given the severity of the climate crisis. But it does point us to the need to think strategically differently from just putting more energy into negotiating the number behind the comma inside the COP. It points us to the need to think strategically about how we can build a global social movement that can very concretely achieve emissions reductions, that can very concretely deliver more global justice and not try to restart capitalism with all the kind of dangers that you've already pointed to. And I think that the emerging movement for the emerging global movement for climate justice has developed has come up with a number of I think pretty clever points demands, directional demands, as it were, around which we can struggle and which aren't, we're not saying, you know, destroy, like abolish capitalism now as much as that might, might, may or may not be desirable, depending on the political position. We're putting forth a number of demands that would definitely lead in, to immediate emissions reductions and increase our power to achieve more, right? That is basically deliver more climate justice. First, we need to start leaving fossil fuels in the ground. And I don't expect governments that are locked into contracts with corporations or international treaties to leave fossil fuels in the ground. We need to shut down coal-fired power plants, which in Germany or the UK, which is have been active, are being built at a rapid pace. So leaving fossil fuels in the ground is the first demand. <coughs> Secondly, moving away from the madness of export-driven industrialized agriculture. Right, that would mean shutting down the WTO, for example, right, and replacing it with a system of food sovereignty, regionalized sustainable agriculture. You know, this would also really change the global power relations because that would mean people would have much more control over their own livelihoods. So immediate emissions reduction, bracket industrial agriculture is an enormous emitter depending on how you calculate it, between 17 and 32 percent of global emissions are produced by the export driven industrial agriculture system. If we replace that with a system of regionalized sustainable food sovereignty agriculture, 
we'd achieve massive emissions reductions and totally change global power relations because people would have more power over their own livelihoods. Third, decentralize and socialize energy systems in order to turn them into renewable energy systems. That stuff's not on the agenda of the COP, right? We, the no, movement, are... point where you can speak it slowly. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, yeah. Energy. Energy.